Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course. As you can see from the title of this video, I do want to give commentary on Judge Scott McAfee's ruling in the case regarding District Attorney Fonnie Willis and um, her involving her alleged lover, boyfriend, Nathan Wade, in the election case against Trump and the money that he was paid and the money that was exchanged between the two of them when they took lavish trips. Now, before I get into my commentary, my opinion, of course, I want to say that everything that I'm saying here is alleged in my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on this video and the facts of the case are allowed for criticism. So I first want to uh, play this video from CNN.com. It is the um, journalist giving their opinion on the judge's ruling. And then I want to give some information about what took place today. And then just talk about my overall opinion on how Fonnie Willis has handled this entire situation from appointing her alleged lover to the case in the first place. Now, I do not want you all to experience an echo, so I'm going to mute my mic and then play the video. Here we go. Thank you. This is what I'm reading in, in the language. The prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of two options. So very clear there. He's saying you cannot go forward unless what? One of you has to go. Either the DA and with her the entire office or Nathan Wade, this will be the easiest decision the yeah. DA's office has ever had to make. Obviously, Nathan Wade will go. And the judge in his ruling says, essentially, this is necessary to preserve public confidence in this case. He says there's enough of an appearance. There's an, enough of, uh, as he says at one point, an odor of mendacity oh. around this case. Interesting phrase. Hmm. That something's got to be done to at least clean up the but public this thing perception. Smells. Yes, yeah. of mendacity, whatever that smells like. Uh, <laughs> but um, seriously, with that, but, but, but this case, what you're talking about, this yes. whole thing was so messy, and that's what Michael Moore was saying. And, and, and this could have been nipped in the bud. Right. Again, it's really important to, to underscore here the big takeaway Fonnie Willis stays on the case, the DA's office keeps the case, the case can carry on. That is far and away the bold headline. headline. They have survived but not without substantial damage. I mean, there is some really stark language in this ruling. The judge calls out the DA's, quote, tremendous lack in judgment, the odor of mendacity. He says that the speech, the public speech she made in the church was, quote, legally improper. And the judge even says in the ruling, it may be time for a gag order on the DA because she keeps on making improper public statements. He leaves it out there. He doesn't say I'm issuing one, but he raises the possibility of a gag order on the DA. I mean, we, look, there's gag orders on Donald Trump right. because right. we collectively fear that he may be tainting the jury pool. And now the judge floats the same possibility. So the DA's office has survived. The case survives. It will roll on at what pace we'll see, but, but there's some damage done here. Is this... This isn't the best that could, this isn't the best ruling that Fonnie Willis yeah. could have gotten, or is this the best ruling? It's pretty close to the yeah, best. That's, okay, yeah. I, yeah. I just want to make sure that we're making just, clear to people. Yeah. To get it. Yeah. yeah. If, if I'm the DA, I am breathing a heavy sigh of relief okay. right now because this language, yeah, it, we will see it in the media and maybe the jury pool will see it. You can filter that out later, but they have survived. Okay, thank you for that. So I want to, you know, just talk about some of the facts of what happened today um, in the judge's ruling. So what we definitely see here is that Judge Scott McAfee again ruled that Fani had to either fire her alleged lover, Nathan Wade, in order to remain over the election case or she would have had to go herself if she did not fire her alleged lover, Nathan Wade. As a result, after the judge's ruling, Nathan resigned from the election case. He submitted his resignation letter to Fani and she accepted his resignation. And the letter is being reported that he stated that he is proud of all of the work that the team has done thus far. Now, Judge McAfee suggested in, I believe, what is a 23-page opinion, he said that, you know, a gag order may have to be issued against Fani 
after her remarks in a church in January where she said that Nathan Wade was targeted because he is black. And so I thought that to be very interesting, we'll have to see what happens in the election case if uh, a gag order is issued. Now, some people still view this as a partial win for Trump because Trump has, his legal team has been able to successfully delay all four of his criminal trials. So, you know, that's giving them more time to prepare, to strategize, but ultimately the delays kind of give him a little bit of hope that perhaps he can get back into the White House before these trials, you know, conclude, especially this Fulton County case. Now, what I do want to say, in my opinion, when we all saw Fonnie Willis's testimony a month ago, there was definitely some arrogance, you know, and I believe that it would take arrogance for you to even have the audacity to appoint your alleged lover, your alleged married lover, your alleged married lover who reportedly is an injury attorney to an election case against a former president of the United States. I mean, wouldn't you consider that to be a very serious case, a very serious job that you have to do? And to me, it takes a level of arrogance to say, although this is like the president of the US, this is an election fraud case, I'm still gonna appoint my man over here and I'm gonna pay him allegedly a higher rate than the other two attorneys that I have appointed. It takes some arrogance to even have the balls or, or, or the kitty cat to do that. And I definitely see that in Fani. Now, on the flip side to that, I have friends, women who are attorneys, and I know that they have to be tough when a lot of their peers are men, you know, and they have to be able to hold their, home, hold their own in a conversation be confident, stand in what they believe in. So I definitely understand having enough arrogance to be able to um, handle that profession and that industry that she works in. But I think that you have to fine tune the arrogance. You have to decide what lines you're not going to cross and you would have to decide what is too risky career wise and, and for this case. You know, what's more important to you, Fani, is it prosecuting the former president and the 14 others in the election case? Or is it about hooking up your alleged lover with $650,000 and then allegedly you all take these lavish trips and he's like, you know, giving you some money back, you know? And that's, that's why it was definitely a concern. And it just looked bad, Fani. I just feel like the optics, it looks bad. Now, she brought up race. I don't believe that he was targeted because he was a black man. Definitely not 100% race. It is because Michael Roman, Rowan, I'm sorry, he does not want to be prosecuted. So he found out this gossip, this tea about the alleged lover, Nathan Wade, being married and having a thing with Fonnie Willis. And he brought it out to into the public and there was there was a court proceeding. As you can see, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm trying to use the correct terms. But I don't think that it's all about race. I think that it was because it looks very unprofessional. It looks bad. And the defendants, they're just trying to survive. They're trying to get out of a legal bind in a major way. Now, if it is about race, I pose the question back to Fani since she brought that up in the church in January. We are raised to think you have to work just as hard. You have to get better grades. You have to conduct yourself in the utmost way. You know, if, you, if you're raised that way in a black family. And I assume that you are funny because your dad is a lawyer, you're a lawyer, you both are educated, your daughters are in college. We all learned that from the, from the hearings as well. So if you were told that you have to work just as hard because you're black, why would you make a move such as this where you would appoint your alleged lover to be on an election fraud case that your office is over? Why would you move that way? That is so messy and unprofessional. Just like what Judge McAfee said. I totally agreed with him. And he actually said that her words in the church was legally improper. And I think that she was trying to get 
um, the black public, the black America, all hyped up trying to make it a racial case, trying to trigger our emotions. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely some black women out there that are pro Fonnie Willis in this situation. And then they're saying, well, it's not a big deal. What's the big deal? You know, I just think that it, it looks unprofessional. And this case is too serious. Any case that she handles, should she should take it seriously to the point where she would not choose to bring in her alleged lover, who allegedly is an injury lawyer, married, and, you know, he's being paid a higher rate. And that has to totally affect the morale of the other two lawyers who have been working just as hard, researching, interviewing, everything that they have to do for this case. And he's getting paid more money. You know, it, it just doesn't look cool at all. So that is definitely my opinion. Um, thank you so much for checking out this video. I truly appreciate the support. Please hit the like button on this video. It is a free way of supporting the channel. And please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit if you have not already done so. The weekend is here. I'm going to get out of the house. The sun is shining. It is gorgeous. My work day is over. I am so thrilled. And I will talk with you all soon. Bye.